Hey everybody, I'm the Ranting Monkey and today we're going to talk about double standards and racism. I woke up this morning and did what I usually do. Logged onto Twitter to see what the hell I'd missed since I was last awake. These were the top three items on my trending list. Harvard, Kyle Kashev, and David Hogg. Now we're not going to talk about David Hogg. He's only trending because Kyle is. You see, Kyle just had his Harvard acceptance rescinded because of things he said in the past. So David ended up trending just because he got into Harvard as a legacy kid, even though he might not be the smartest guy. Um, uh, can I, I think Canadians can donate to political campaigns in the United States. They can't? Well, uh, well, vote here, make, because... <laughs> Learn from us. D don't let this happen here because we, we need to come to you guys if, uh, if we stay on this track. He only comes up because both he and Kyle are survivors of Parkland and had been accepted to Harvard. For all intents and purposes, as always, David is irrelevant. But we are going to talk about Kyle and Harvard. Recently, some screenshots of things Kyle said when he was 16 have resurfaced. I'm not going to show them here because YouTube would kick me off the platform for doing so. If you're curious, you can look him up, but basically he just used the N-word a lot. A whole lot. And because of this, Kyle has had his acceptance to Harvard rescinded. Kyle released a Twitter thread explaining exactly what happened. In the thread, Kyle shared a letter that he sent to Harvard to explain why he said these things. In which he said, in part, this. I understand Harvard's concern over these offensive statements from my past, and I further understand that Harvard has been contacted about them by people expressing concern about them. I am very sorry to put the college in this position. I am determined to make whatever steps are necessary to rectify this past wrong, and to reassure Harvard of my commitment to values of tolerance, diversity, and inclusion, which I hope to advance as a member of the class of 2024. This is the context in which I made these comments. While this does not excuse my comments, I made poor choices with regards to the people I surrounded myself with. I became part of a group in which those words bore little weight and were used only in a means for their shock value. I bore no racial animus. The context was a group of adolescents trying to use the worst words and say the most insane things imaginable. Until these writings were disclosed, I had long forgotten about them. While I will forever bear incredible shame for typing them, I especially feel remorse now that they have been made public knowing they have caused terrible pain to people I care about. I gave no consideration to the meaning and weight of the words I wrote in an effort to impress then friends and classmates. And looking back, I know clearly know I wrote terrible things I can never unwrite. That wasn't me making a mistake there at the end. As my good friend Scribe would say, I'm reading it as written. When I was reminded of my writings, I was mortified and embarrassed. My parents raised me to be better than what is represented in those screenshots from about two years ago. In an effort to be honest and transparent as possible, I immediately apologized publicly when reminded of those messages, while knowing the media uproar that would ensue. It did ensue, and I have continued to accept responsibility and the resulting legitimate criticism. Well, I'm not sure I would exactly call it an apology. There's no I'm sorry or I apologize anywhere in it. He did release a statement accepting responsibility when these screenshots first came to light. I've recently been made aware of screenshots circulating that include offensive comments former classmates and I made a few years ago, long before the shooting. I want to address this with honesty and transparency. We were 16-year-olds making idiotic comments, using callous and inflammatory language in an effort to be as extreme and shocking as possible. I'm embarrassed by it and I want to be clear that the comments I made were not indicative of who I am or who I've become in the years since. This past year has forced me to mature and grow in an incredibly drastic way. My world, like everyone else's in Parkland, was turned upside down on February 14th. When your classmates, your teachers, and your neighbors are killed, it transforms you as a human being. I see the world through different eyes and I'm embarrassed by the petty, flippant kid represented in those screenshots. I believe those I've gotten to know since know that I'm a better person than that. I can and will do better moving forward. So, not exactly an apology, but it is an admittance that he screwed up and a promise to do better in the future. But that's not enough for some people. David Hogg put his neck on the line and fought for gun control while getting death threats daily. Kyle Cash has sat behind a computer and made racist comments online. Do you really want to know which teenager deserves to get into Harvard and who doesn't? It's not a coincidence that the entire conservative media apparatus wants committing acts of racism to have no personal consequences. It's pretty consistent, and not at all limited to Kyle Kashev. Anyone stupid enough to write the N-word in text messages has no business attending Harvard. Kyle Kashev's acceptance was an aberration to begin with, and the university had no choice but to do the right thing here. Why do I get the feeling you don't actually mean that? That if this was a black guy who had texted the N-word, you wouldn't be saying that? And that's the problem here. There is such a double standard going on. And I'm not just talking about the fact that if this was a black man who dropped an N-bomb a hundred times, nobody would give a shit. 
I'm talking about the fact that Harvard is racist. In fact, they're being sued for it right now. We're actually waiting on a judge's decision because Harvard has been sued for discriminating against Asians. The group was able to view the documents through its lawsuit, which was filed in 2014 and challenges Harvard's admission policies. The plaintiff said in a letter to the court last week that the documents were so compelling that there was no need for a trial and that they would ask the judge to rule summarily in their favor based on the documents alone. The plaintiffs also say the public, which provides more than half a billion dollars a year in federal funding to Harvard, has a right to see the evidence that the judge will consider in her decision. The judge did allow it to go to trial, and we're still waiting for the decision. But basically, the case boils down to this. In an effort to get more diversity, it seems like Harvard has decided Asian people aren't very likable. Even if they have very high test scores and lots of extracurricular activities, when they sat down to be interviewed, it turns out Asians are only half as likable as black people. Or at least according to the college that we give $500 million a year. I don't know this Kyle kid. I know he's a conservative, and I know he supports gun rights, and I know that that means he doesn't get the positive press somebody like David Hogg does. But I am having trouble figuring out why in the world him saying the N-word two years ago, before going through a tragic life event that very well could have changed his entire outlook, is somehow more important than Harvard being fucking racist. These are private messages that were only seen by him and his friends. Meanwhile, Harvard educates over 22,000 people a year. Which one of those seems like it might have more impact? I don't believe for one second that anybody actually gives a shit that Kyle said the N-word while talking to his friends. This is a hit job. A way to take out somebody who's conservative. A way to beat him down so he goes away. He's a Parkland survivor who supports guns despite what happened. We can't allow that. And that's why there's a blind eye being turned to the racism from Harvard. It's not about racism. It's about shutting down people who have the wrong view. Harvard allows all kinds of people in with questionable pasts. This gentleman here pled guilty to carjacking, attempted robbery, and firearm charges. Despite that, he turned his life around and became an attorney. And while he ended up going to Yale, he was accepted by Harvard. Anybody seriously want to make the argument that a kid making jokes with his friends is worse than fucking carjacking? And then there's Harvard's questionable past, a point Kyle brought up in his Twitter thread. Throughout its history, Harvard's faculty has included slave owners, segregationists, bigots, and anti-Semites. If Harvard is suggesting that growth isn't possible, and that our past defines our future, then Harvard is an inherently racist institution. But I don't believe that. I don't know about that. I do wonder what would happen if Kyle had dropped some John McCain-style slurs instead of N-bombs. But that's neither here nor there. What Kyle's getting at here is that personal growth is possible. He said some dumb shit when he was 16. Which one of us hasn't done that? And now he's being punished for it two years later, as though personal growth isn't a possibility. Unlike most people, he went through a very tragic event. Since then, he's led a very public life. Nothing like this has come out since the shooting. We don't have anything that he wrote since the shooting with a whole bunch of N-bombs in it. Are there any out there? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know the kid. But it is possible that after going through what he did, he grew up. Tragedy has a way of doing that to you. And I don't think this is something Harvard really actually gave a shit about. The outrage mob came after this kid. They're the ones who went and demanded Harvard not let him in because he said the N-word two years prior, when he was 16. And because of that, now his life has to be completely altered. It has to be shut the hell down because he's a conservative and he supports gun rights. A lot of us have said some really stupid shit. Not just in our past, recently. Harvard gets to decide who goes to their school. But they seem to not only have a racist past, but a racist present. And when I see people getting all up in arms because this kid said something racist so he shouldn't be able to go to Harvard, I just have to sit here and scratch my head and wonder what the fuck kind of world I'm living in. How does that make any goddamn sense? If you actually do think he's racist, then it seems like Harvard's the perfect place for him. But again, that's not what this is about. Nobody cares about him saying racist shit to his friends when he was 16 in private messages. This is a conservative kid who's come out in support of guns after Parkland, and he has to be shut down. And they're doing it to him, in one of the most hypocritical situations I've seen in a long, long time. Alright guys, that's going to wrap things up here. Don't forget, you can pick up Monkey Merchandise down in the store. You can also support the channel through Patreon or Streamlabs donations. If you want to get more Monkey in your life, down below you'll find my social media contact information, as well as the schedule for when I'm live streaming. 
I've also started releasing the Monkey in the Morning streams as a podcast, which you can also find down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm the Ranting Monkey, and I'll see you next time. Um, uh, can I, I, I think Canadians can donate to political campaigns in the United States. They can't? Your life makes me sad. <laughs>